So this will return nothing, but it will be public. So whether my uh, collision event can use it. New random direction. I'm going to create a new angle it's going to choose. And I need this to be somewhere between 0 and 360 degrees. Now, I'm pretty sure that this uses radians. So for those of you that haven't taken trig yet, that means that the new random number is actually going to be between 0 and 2 pi. In Unity, or in C Sharp, you can say random dot random range, or I'm sorry, range actually is what I want. And that'll give me a minimum and a maximum value. And so it'll pick some number between whatever this number is and whatever this number is. So I'm going to go from 0 to 2 times pi. So in the MathF library, there's pi is built in for you. You don't have to know the whole thing. So that'll pick a new number between 0 and 2 pi, which basically means 0 and 360 degrees. Now that I have this new angle, now I need to actually set my velocity to be that thing. I'm going to go grab a component, my rigid body, because that's the thing that has my physics and my velocity inside of it. Open and close parentheses. Don't forget that right after the left and right less than and greater than signs. Dot velocity. So this is going to be a new vector 3. Uh, for those of you that don't know how uh, trig works, what we're going to do is, in order to get the x component of an angle, you actually use cosine. This is also contained in the MathF library of my angle. And that's basically 1 in whatever direction my new angle is at. So I have to multiply this by my speed. Then I need to use the sine, which is the y part of it, of my new angle, times my speed. And I don't want to go flying into or out of the screen, so the z component is going to be 0. So just a quick thing. Grab a new angle. So somewhere between 0 and 360 degrees. Set the x to be that angle times whatever speed you're supposed to be going at. Set the y component to be that angle times the speed of whatever you're going at. And don't go into or out of the screen. So now whenever I call this, I'll get my ball to move in a new direction. Like right here, for example. That sounds good. Let's make sure this part works, and then we'll put this into the collision event of the wall. So when we start, OK, do you see that went at a different angle than just straight over to the right? Next, we need to put this randomized direction into our left score. So if I click on this, we need to set this script to use that left score display after we've collided with it. So if I go open up left score, so I set my thing, I've set my count, I've set my position, so now what I need to do is I need to basically stop my velocity here. So I'm going to grab the attached ball, or I could do the call game object, dot get component, and I need to get its rigid body, because that's the thing that actually has a velocity. Normal objects don't have a velocity. Dot velocity. So it needs this open and close parentheses, by the way. So if I wanted to stop, I just create a new vector 3, which is 0, and it's a floating point. 0, floating point. 0, floating point. And it stops. Then I need to set that delay. Remember that delay thing I was working on? So to do this, I need to do the start co routine. And I'm going to create a method here in a second called execute after time, which is going to basically pause the movement of the ball object. That was a failure in typing. X. 
compute after time. This is going to stop the ball object, wait for some amount of time, and then start it again. Well, I've stopped here. This will restart it. So to create something that goes in a car routine, you need it to be an I enumerator. I need the name of my method, execute after time. That was much better that time. And this is going to have this series of magic words where you basically yield and then wait for time. So yield, which means pause the thread, come back after you wait for some number of seconds. I'm going to do two seconds. And then I'm going to tell it to go to an, in a new random direction. And it'll be this attached ball that needs to go in a random direction. Good thing I wrote that method. Oh, I forgot the new keyword, by the way. So it's a new wait for seconds. So the basic idea of this method is when I collide, add one to the score, change the text, jump it back to the center. And by the way, stop its velocity. So the rigid body has no speed. And then we're going to run this thing, which is a timer, basically. This is going to wait for two seconds, and then it's going to pick a new random direction. Away we go. And boom, to the center. Picks a new random direction. Boom, to the center. New random direction. All right, this is looking great. A few things that I need to fix. I should probably jump up actually to the center itself. So instead of this negative 2, I probably should just put it in this maybe negative 1, maybe 0. Something that's closer to the center line without actually being on the center line. Or I could just make my center line thinner so that it's clear what the ball is and what is the center line. Uh, the other thing I need to do is I need to do all of this on the right side. So the right side score is going to be very similar except for the right side wall. So you're going to need another UI element for the right side as well as a script that deals with the right side collision event. Otherwise, things will be very similar between the two. So hopefully you can use the same sort of technique in order to create the right side score.